Hi everyone, welcome back to my basic fire tutorial series. Now we are in the module 3, fire conformance. My name is Ratpan Yawad. This video series was created for the master program in data science for healthcare and clinical informatics at Ramathibadi Hospital, Mahidon University. And this is about me and here is my contact channels. This session is about extension. So let's begin. And let's recap for a bit. Why we need an extension? Because Fire used the 80-20 rule. The standard will include only things that widely used by 80% of system in healthcare. So what do we do with the remaining 20%? That is the role of extensions. We define an extension by creating the structure definition resource. Uh, is it the same resource that the fire call used to define all other base resource? And it's also the same resource you would for defining a profile, uh, which is the next session. What about we create the extension to cover this demanding 20% and the one who receives our resource doesn't understand that 20%. So it should be safe for application to process the resource without knowing the extension definition, unless it's a modifier extension, which I will talk about in this session as well. About creating an extension, when to create. The first thing to consider is you check with the file core structure and you cannot find any data that can be represented with the core file structure. And after that, you search on the extension registry, like uh, the one came with fire or on the simplifier.net, and you still cannot find an appropriate extension to use. So you search for an existing extension and you cannot find anything, then it might be a good time to create your own extension. So if you decided to create a new extension, you should make it generic and reusable because the extension that you create may be able to reuse and then you don't have to create it again in the future so that it saves time and effort. In this session, you will know that there are many places that you can put an extension in. The good thing to do is you should put the extension on the relevant elements unless it's really no such elements. Extension can be simple or complex. All extensions, whether it's simple or complex, will have this URL. It's a canonical URL, same as the URL that we use for identifying a code system in the last session. Even though the name of the element is URL, but the type is URI. Uh, when the type is URI, uh, you here and see the data type and this one URI. It can be many things. Uh, it can be a URL, it can be a UUID or OID and other things. But for this element, it shall be a URL and not a URN, not OID, not UUID. It shall be a canonical URL of the structure definition that defines this extension. So it means that when the system, the application, get the info from this URL, they can resolve the structure definition of that extension mm -hmm. so that the system can understand what is that extension is about. In conclusion, every extension, whether it's simple or complex, will have a URL element, and that URL element should contain a URL. And for simple extension, it means that it only has one, one value for that extension. Uh, when you see this value, uh, x, it means that it can be many types because we in extension, we can define many data types for the extension we create, right? We want it to be string, sometimes we want it to be number, sometimes we want it to be code, codable concept, uh, many, many types. So 
uh, if you come to the spec and you go to this one extensibility page you will see that the value x element can be many many type maybe it's even all the type that define fire i'm not sure is this all or not but it's very really a lot of them okay so that is simple extension uh, for example uh, religion this one this url click this and then we are here uh, this is the structure definition of a religion extension so if you go to full structure you will see this this is an extension and it has a url element and value x element and that value is codable concept so if it become json it will become like this so this is an example and this codable concept was bound to this value set if we go here we will see that there are many code in this value set and here is the real structure definition of this extension so you came here and you get here this is the actual structure definition of the extension it's like machine readable definition of the extension and if you remember every resource in fire the call fire and even the profile was defined with the structure definition and when we use the extension in the resource it can be like this uh, resource type and then we put an extension here and the url specify the, the canonical url of that extension and this is the value of that extension you can see that it's only single value in that extension uh, even though inside it is a complex data type but so this one is just single value. Let's say that this patient uh, has a religion as a Satanism. So it will become like this. The next one is complex extensions. Uh, complex extension is quite similar to simple extension because it has a URL as well. Uh, this one is a summary view, so it doesn't show the URL element, but here is the URL of this uh, of this extension. Now we can go here. Here is the uh, citizenship extension. Full structure. We have the extension URL, the main URL one, and we have a sub extension inside. So complex extension means that uh, an extension that has multiple value inside it. The main URL is quite the same as the simple extension. But the URL for uh, for the child extension will be relative to the main one. Like this, this is the complex extension. When we use in a resource, this one is the main URL, the canonical URL of the extension. And here we have the sub extension. Inside the extension, the first one is codable concept. And the second one is period and the url of the sub element is just like this code it means that it relative to the parent one this one i copy it from here this uh this page this one right. if we try to view the content it be like this uh let format it a bit okay so this is the extension of the resource so this one this resort patient has an extension element and inside that extension we have the url and another extension like this because if you go to the specification you will see that an extension element uh, can have url and value url is a must but any extension it must have either another extension or this value in this case because we don't have this value so we have another extension inside of it and here 
inside this element we have two extension inside of it uh, because uh, let's say that we go to um, maybe patient resource and here because when we put an extension inside element we can have uh, many extension inside an array right so this is an array and we have two extension this is one sub extension this is another sub extension uh, both of them have url and value this one url and value but the url is the relative one from here the next one is uh, modifier extensions a modifier ex extension is like a modifier element uh, uh, if you remember from our earlier module, we talked about a modifier element like this one, deceit x, information about if the patient is already dead or not. That is this one telling us that this is a modifier element. It means that this element can significantly change the meaning of that resource. Modifier extension works the same way. It means that extension can significantly modify the meaning of the element that contain it so if it contain in the base patient resource it means that that extension can modify the meaning of that patient resource for example uh, but if it's a if it inside another element uh, let's say that it's a modifier extension that is on the uh, patient contact element like this one patient contact so it means that uh, that element can significantly modify the meaning of this contact maybe it became like a list of do not contact something like that uh, so it can change the meaning of this element but it cannot change the meaning of this resource or other element because it's a uh, extension that exists in this one and i will talk later that are not many data types that can have the modifier extension and backbone element is one of that and so because it can modify the meaning of the element so it's not safe to ignore the modifier extension i you here in the first one normally extension can be safe to ignore uh, if the application don't know the meaning of the extension they can just ignore it but if it's a modifier extension it's not safe to ignore because it can significantly modify the meaning of the element that contain it uh, typically the modifier extension is used for like a qualifies or negate the primary meaning for example, anti-prescription is an instruction not to take a medicine for a particular period. Normally, we order a medicine for the patient to take, right? But if we have this anti-prescription attached to the medication request resource like this in the demo from respect, so that significantly change the meaning of that medication request like right so order not to take medication is completely opposite of order to take and because this one is important and people might accidentally uh, ignore it so uh, if it's possible uh, we should find a way that we don't have to use this modifier extensions if we cannot find it we can use it but it should be avoid if possible uh, another thing to consider when you create an extension is the coded data type. Uh, if it's possible, codable concept is the most flexible one because uh, it can have value from multiple code system like this one. It can have uh, value from uh, Synomate from Visual Code. This is an example from FireSpec itself. If you use a code data type, it means that you already fix the system. If you use a coding data type, uh, people can use only one code.
code system but if you use codable concept they can choose from different code system as many as they want and binding string should not be required uh, it, it can be extensible prefer or example depend on uh, our situation but require is very rigid and it limits the flexibility to reuse that extension in other contexts so if possible uh, do not use required as binding string we can increase the binding string when we do a profiling later if we want okay now we know what is the extension and how it looks like the next important thing is where can we add an extension to so basically there are the three locations that you can add an extension uh, at the base of the resource right this at an element and at the backbone element so there are two places that we can have modifier extension uh, that is the at the base of the resource like this and at the backbone element so so how how does this came from uh, if you go back to the fire spec many resource in fire inherit from this domain resource and this domain resource inherit from resource right resource is contain information like id metadata and this one the one that start to have uh, an extension is domain resource and we can have extension here and also modifier extension like this one and so because patient inherit from domain resource so that it can have extension at the very top of it resource uh, i'm not sure which one has an extension but maybe this one so i, I show you xml because it forced the order so uh, id and followed by text id is from resource and text is from domain resource so if you want to add extension you can add it here before the first element of patient resource identifier is the first element right so we have to add around here for the xml for example so this is how we can add extension at the uh, at the base of the many resource in fire the next is at the element how come this came from okay because all element in fire have data type and any data type in fire will have the inherit from the root element here and in that root element it has an extension element here like this so it means that any elements in fire you can add extension to it and the next is backbone element backbone elements is special data type that for defining a complex element inside uh, each resource and for and for defining uh, some data types as well like uh, this one there will be timing dosage and element definition that that inherit from this backbone element so can you go here uh, maybe we are back here and you see that this this one like this one timing dosage and this element definition inherit from backbone element inherit from backbone element so uh, it, it's a, a bit at one concept i uh, don't need to uh, worry about it uh, the important thing is that in the definition of backbone element you can have a modifier extension so if you see a contact like this patient.contact you can have modifier extension here in this element can this element have a 
extension the normal extension yes it can because backbone element is an element right so any element inherit from the base element and in that element the base element it has an extension so basically if you see the backbone element you can add extension and modifier extension yeah. I have four demo to show you the location that you can add uh, extension the first one is at base and the other three is uh, at element uh, for for this one is I think it's not different when you add it to this one so so I think I don't have to show it okay if you want to add the extension at the base of the resource uh, because you can represent file resource in JSON and in XML, right? Uh, uh, these two have many similarity, but, but they are different in some parts. For adding an extensions at the base of the resource, uh, whether it's JSON or XML, you just put it there and under the extension uh, element here because it came from domain resource like I showed you earlier, domain resource had extension element and it many so that you can add extension here uh, as many as you want. So uh, if it's JSON, uh, put it in an array like this. Uh, if it's XML, just stacking it uh, over each other. The next one is extension on element now it has some difference between the JSON and XML. Okay, let's go to see this example in here. XML and JSON has the birth date here. And this one, it has birth date here. As you can see, in XML, we put a child element like this and say that extension URL equal this thing and the value like this uh, inside that main element but in JSON we put this main element here and then we add another element with underscore in front of it like this so and inside that is like a, at the base this source so this is how to add extensions on element. For some element that is a primitive data type, uh, like um, this one, human name and and here, given name. It's a primitive data type, but it has the zero to many cardinality, so we can have uh, many given name in this element. So uh, in JSON representation, it will become like this, uh, element and array and primitive value inside. And in XML, it will stacking over each other. If it's the JSON representation, you put an underscore like this, similar to primitive data type that cannot repeat. The difference is uh, if you want to add an extension to what element you have to make sure that the location in array is the same so in this case we want to add an extension to this value in nc so we put it in the second object of an array and the first one we just put it now like this but for xml you can do it this way just put an extension inside of it like this normally and the last one is the putting an extension on complex element uh, if it's an XML we can just put it like like this actually it's quite similar to put it in the base of the resource like this right this one just change the base resource to be the element that you want to include the extension if it's JSON, it's quite similar as well. When we put it in the base resource, we put it like this. 
Now when we extend from an element, we put it like this. So this is quite similar. Uh, if this is not a normal complex element, but it's a backbone element, you add it the same way. Do it like this, because uh, backbone element is a complex element. It's this one. Uh, I, I would like to point you to this one as well, the language extension. This one is an example of what you call a general extension. It's a set of extension that fire define for us and we can use it in many situations, many occasions. Like this, like a data app send, a geolocation, translation, language, uh, many things. Uh, let's say that you have any resource, like uh, maybe encounter, and you want to specify what is the language of that element, you can add this language extension there and that it is. So th this is an example of uh, general extensions. And now the demo time uh, based on the last session working with terminology. Suppose the hospital can define the primary clinic for the patient uh, for whatever reason. We want to add the uh, default clinic extension into a patient resource. So how could we do that? Uh, in order to do this, uh, there are a few tools in the market that you can use to create a, a profile and extension, but I will demo with the program name Forge that you have to download it from this simplifier.net. It's a file registry there and you download the Forge program. And I think before you download, you have to log in first. And when you create your account, you can have like a portal that have, that you can publish many things you create in Fire to there, like a, an extension and profile. And you can even search uh, what other people have created in case that Maybe you can use uh, other people's work like this. So that uh, profile um, is a four and it active, for example. So maybe you can reuse uh, what other people have already created. And Forge is a program that you have to have windows to use it. Uh, in my case, I use Parallel and I think, um, and maybe you can use other tool like uh, VirtualBox to run the Windows VM in your machine. Or maybe you can create a VM in the cloud and remote to that. Uh, okay, uh, after, after you download it, it will become like this and you open and I think it will if you run it for the first time it will ask you for the login thing after you log in here you will find this page you can open the profile folder for me I will use this ready profile and I will open it inside the folder because is still an empty folder so you will not see anything but uh, I will create a new extension and the name is a uh, default uh, default clinic I think and nothing canonical URL yeah, it will change automatically. Okay. And here we are. Uh, if you see this uh, warning sign, it will show you there are something that uh, you should be fixed. Okay, so this extension. Maybe this property. 
the source ID, no name. Uh, so the problem is in the context. And our context in this extension is we are extending the file patient resource, right? So we specify that we're extending the patient resource. Yeah, and the error go is gone now. And narrative, yeah, it, I think all, if you really create the real resource, you should put something around here. And also the version public, publishing date and the, what is another thing? Purpose, title, everything. But I will skip for now. And the element three, an extension, the URL of the extension is already defined, right? Here. Oh, you can change this one to, to, to be other URL. So that, to the URL that, that another system can resolve for this uh, definition. So what, what we have to focus is now in the element tree and because this is the simple extension, so we only have one value and that value is codable concept, right? Because we plan to buy it to a value set we create in the last session. And uh, we, well, let's say that we want this to be required element. So we set cardinality to, uh, so minimum one, uh, maximum one. And then now we will buy to a value set. And because the list of the clinic in our hospital might not change so that often, I think uh, extensible might be fine or maybe even prefer or example. And you have to specify the canonical URL for that value set. So I already copy it from my happy fire local from the last session. Uh, we got this one and the URL is here, best service of our hospital that has contained four codes or concept. We go back to this and specify this, like this. Uh, I think other thing is we can talk about it in profile section, but here is basically how to create the extension. All right, uh, after that, you save this extension, uh, maybe this one, uh, it can be XML or JSON. I think XML is fine. And then you save here, you copy it here. Yeah? And you open it in here, yeah? and you can see that this is an extension that it creates. It is a structure definition resource with uh, element that related to the extension. So copy it here, and I will send it to my happy fire server. Mm -hmm. So I have to send this to this. I think it might got some error because the URL is crashed with the previous one that I already created. Maybe it is different, I'm not sure. Okay, XML and then send. Yeah, it create, uh, it succeed. Uh, uh, actually, when you create the resource instance, you can reference to an extension like this. It will not cause any error because like I said, right? Uh, extension is safe to process without the need to know the definition of extension. But when you put the structure definition of the extension here in our server, then you can use server validation to validate if this information is conform to this structure definition or not. 
I will talk about validation in the next session about profiling. Okay, so that is all for extension. Uh, if anyone has any question, feel free to ask me in this video or ask me in the class. Thank you for attending. Bye-bye.